Good evening, America. Your favorite presidential candidate coming to you this evening to talk about school shootings and what I'm going to do to stop them as your president. Um, first off, there's a distinction between school shootings and school shooters. The school shooter, um, you know, that's going to be a topic for another day, but seeing as how in my county at a local high school we have just had a school shooting, um, I feel like I should start there. Now, hey, this is one of those problems that we can't just bury our head in the sand and hope that it's going to get better. We also can't have these knee-jerk reactions that we've been seeing. So what's going to probably happen, that I'm predicting is going to happen, is that after this school shooting, uh, there's going to be some sort of assembly, there's going to be guidance counselors talking, uh, you know, they're going to handle the kids with kids' gloves. Um, and then they're going to put in metal detectors. They're going to make rules like you have to have a see-through backpack. Um, you know, they're going to do random inspections of, of kids coming on uh, into the school. They're going to lock all the exterior doors throughout the day. And you're going to have to the check in at the main office if you're coming in late uh, and then get patted down or something. It's, it's typical, um, predictable reaction. Um, you know, we've been down this road before. So, how are we going to stop that? Well, first off, we're going to get rid of all these zero tolerance policies. Um, so, let me talk about guns for a little bit here. Um, with the, the no gun, zero tolerance policy, uh, we have seen throughout the country kids being suspended from school as, I think it's as young as five, because he chewed his Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun and then pointed at one of his friends. That is stupid. Um, there's a hearing impaired child who was named Hunter and he signed his name like this, but because that was too aggressive for the school, they told him that if he was going to tell someone his name, he had to sign language it out, uh, you know, each individual letter, which is idiotic. Uh, his kid's name is this. Um, so... We got to get rid of that. Now, I understand. You want your children to be safe. But when it comes to these, um, these zero tolerance policies, they probably add fuel to the fire. Maybe not in a very obvious way. Take fighting. So, these two kids that went to the bathroom, um, whatever the issue was, whatever the root cause of this issue they had with one another, I guarantee you it was essentially ego. Now, had they been afforded the opportunity uh, or known that they could fight, whether it's, you know, at the playground after school or, you know, in the, in the gymnasium, uh, no one gets shot. Also, no one gets attempted murder charges or, depending on how things go for this poor kid that's been shot, um, no one gets murder charges. Now, think about that. Even if this kid survives the gunshot wound, um, the other kid that shot him is facing attempted murder charges. That's not good for either one of them. I hope you understand that. So, I guess what I'm saying is that we're going to bring back fighting by way of getting rid of these zero tolerance policies. But now these kids will be afforded the opportunity to, yeah, they're going to hurt each other, they're going to punch each other in the face a couple of times, um, but they're going to be able to uh, assault one another in a safe manner. No one's going to die. No one's going to get mortally wounded or debilitated or go home with a, you know, permanent disfigurement or a disability because we're going to dial this zero-tolerance crap back. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, it makes sense to me because, you know, I, uh, I was kind of like on the outs a little bit in high school, you know, that's a, that's more of a me issue. So I kind of see how things could go awry. Um, and of course, I think this will also help kind of dial back these, uh, these school shooters, uh, because one thing that typically, typically happens, and I've seen it time and time again, um, 
both as a teenager and as an adult, when you get into a fight with somebody, you develop a mutual respect with them. Uh, if nothing else, you know, hey, maybe I did beat this kid up, but he punched me in the nose a bunch, so uh, I'm not going to pick on him anymore. Uh, anyway, what ends up happening typically is that these two kids, they get into a fight, and then later on down the road, they're like really good friends. They've developed that mutual respect, and that's what this country used to revolve around, mutual respect. And if we are going to move forward with a lot of our societal issues, um, sorry, look at how much time I have so my camera doesn't stop on me. Um, if we're going to move forward with these societal problems that we have, we have to have mutual respect for one another. God bless America. I hope this video finds you well.